presentation. So I invite the next speaker, Mr. Levon Abrahamian. Levon Abrahamian is a cultural anthropologist. He's in charge of the National Academy of Sciences contemporary anthropology ethnography department in the institute he will be speaking from guards to district authorities the organization between the end of 50s to our days of the Yerevan social space organization the epigraph to my communication would be from Robert Sheckley's story. The story is called Watchbird. This is a story about the following. The crime rate in, it's a science fiction story. The crime rate increases in a particular city. They decide to fight against it. They succeed to the researchers create a metal bird that watches over the city and somehow identifies as to when is the crime about to happen and sort of flies down and pre prevents it. Brilliant results are accomplished. Crime rate goes drastically down. But then apparently these watch birds have a self-learning capacity and they expand the scope of definition of a crime the corpus delicti so the life comes to a halt in the city the surgeon can no longer perform surgeries the butcher no longer can uh, engage in his business life comes to a standstill so what's the solution they decide to design a new watchbird which would fight the old breed of the watchbirds. So they create uh, it. It brilliantly performs on its calling, but then they understand that uh, it's not only birds that can be the eliminated. The reason I quoted this is that the plot is very similar to my narrative. By way of preamble, for those who have not been born in the former Soviet Union, because we'll be dealing with this in my short communication, we're talking about the thieves in law. This is a purely Soviet phenomenon, the thieves in law. Uh, there are different takes on this. I'll just share a few words with you. In the 1930s, early 1930s, the crime rate in the Soviet Union uh, increased. There are various opinions as to what caused it. Well, anyway, the prisons uh, were overcrowded. And lawlessness increased, was on the rise uh, in a very grave way. The Armenian wor uh, language doesn't have this word. It's extreme lawlessness. In order to combat it, and there is uh, one prevailing opinion, that this led to the design of this institution of thieves in law. There are different interpretations of this, but that's not the subject of our discussion. So this institution uh, regulated, was called upon to regulate the criminal world. It came into being, was brought forth exactly in those times, and there are examples to illustrate, for example, uh, Varlam Shalamov describes in his stories uh, the following. When there were major issues emerging where he was serving his time in the far north, There was this category of uh, homosexuals who were sort of lowered down. One shouldn't have maintained contact with them. One shouldn't take the bed or the bunk bed that they had slept on. So the thieves in law about that time decided that this is not a communicable. Uh, in Russian, it was called iron is contactless. This meant that 
it could not be conveyed through the bed bank, this lawfulness. They had to also abide by the rule that they should not enter into any interaction with the representatives of the government or the state or the administration, prison administration. There is this hypothetical theory that they were created by the state themselves. Another theory is that this was self-regulated uh, phenomenon, but the administration started to sort of take advantage of it and abuse the system. In any case, the thieves in law enjoyed great reputation. When in 1953, in the wake of Stalin's death, uh, universal amnesty was declared, the thieves in law ended up at large and in the country, including in Armenia, this criminogenic uh, situation amplified. Something had to be done against it, and this was on the scale of the entire Soviet Union. In particularly in Armenia, in those years, uh, uh, end of the 50s, the thieves in law enjoyed uh, tremendous uh, reputation, and something had to be done against it. So. Uh, a war veteran came forth, uh, Avetik Hamayagan. He was uh, holding a quite a hefty office. He was the head of the urban uh, militia police force, that is. And he decides that something needs to be done. It was very hard to uh, combat the thieves in law. So he decides to undermine, erode their reputation, to deprive them of their reputation. How should this could, should have been done? And an idea was entertained by him to, to take as his base of uh, counteraction the street hooligans, the street gangs that uh, had a reputation of their own to defend. It seems to be a hard decision that he took, but still, there are several options to explain this, but Avetikov was considered, in any case, to be the progenitor of uh, design of this new system, of this new watchbird, sort of, and using uh, I've uh, received this from several interlocutors uh, and also my next of kin that predominantly there was this one incident which shaped it. The downtown street gang, hooligans, boys, engage in a fight with two thieves in law and get the upper hand. They beat them up. One was called, uh, the nickname was Chorro, the other was Fan Fan. This was the time when the movie Fan Fan Turpin, the French movie, was quite popular and that he borrowed the nickname from the movie. So I think I've uh, conceived of an idea that these guys may be used as a to counterweight. The main hooligan was called Jojo not to be confused with another uh, person, a thief in law who was also called Jojo, but this was the hooligan Jojo, a different Jojo. So he decides to consolidate these district gangs, consolidate them, teach these guys under his, to take them all under his uh, aegis. There is another version when Avetikov is not so prominent, uh, in the role he played. So these groups had an interesting name. They were called the Guards, Gvardia in Russian. Why this choice? This was a designation that Georgi Karapetyan um, used. He was an associate professor in the Polytechnic University, but he seemed to have a liking for this kind of boys. He made friends with them. He once saw the way they fought in the street fights, and he told them, you look like the 
uh, young guard. That was a very popular post-war uh, title by Fadev, uh, which was then made into a movie. It was called The Young Guard. And so these uh, groups were uh, monikered uh, guards. How were they organized? The first um, gathering point was um, the Moscow Film Theater, Kino Moskva, and the street, two streets flanking it. There are various takes on this. One old guardsman told me that these are all lies. There was Jojo, and there was uh, Moscow Film Theater, Kino Moskva. Like we say, when we say Lenin, we understand uh, Communist Party. When we say Communist Party, we understand uh, Lenin. So when we said Jojo, it was Moscow Theater, and Moscow Theater was Jojo. This was a system in its own. Uh, no Avetikov had any contribution to this. But there are other takes on this story that the same pattern was used to bring together and organize guards in other districts of the city. And it's not clear yet as to whether these were districts in their administrative meaning or there was some other dividing lines. But they more or less overlap with our uh, city blocks. We've already heard how a city is divided into intuitive uh, segments. So one could fully apply this uh, division to the guards that I referred. The Kond guard, where our guests yesterday have been to, was well known, and they definitely could not have visited Kond in those years, uh, our guests. So what made these guards, what was their function, apart from uh, having to counteract and lure down the thieves in law, undermining their reputation. They also acquired the role of guardians of the district, of the block. They stood guard and maintained the honor and reputation of the district where they lived which made them different, uh, incidentally, by what made these guards different from the Kazan phenomenon, the Russian city of Kazan, which has become very popular and has, especially two years ago, there was this publication by Garayev. The uh, word of the district guy, Slova Patsana. These Kazan groups have some similarities with these guys, but they're also distinctly different because these guys uh, looked after the girls of the district without ever touching them, just protecting them, uh, not allowing anyone to offend them. This was exactly what the word guard uh, implies, like those watchbirds. And of course, they engaged in fights uh, with other district guards. This fight got to the extent it escalated to great dimensions and got out of scale. There are descriptions of uh, makeshift firearms even being used. So that was getting pretty grave. They not always succeeded in getting the upper hand over the thieves in law. I have a case on record. I'm not naming people because uh, once in uh, after a similar presentation, I had an issue. The old guard pe guardsman took offense uh, with me. There was this famous thief in law, uh, a reputa reputation, Spartak Baznuni. He is no longer alive, so it would be safe to shave this terror. He was not a thief in law, but they, no one ever succeeded in breaking him, in denigrating him. There is a description about how on the very Abovian street for about 40 minutes, the Jojo's uh, famous guard uh, 
attacked him, but he had uh, an axe rolled in a newspaper under his arm and no one could approach him. So it's not that everything was smooth with the guards. My interlocutors uh, tell me, and it also is available in the archives, that in the early 60s, around 62, 63, the guards, it would be hard to say whether they dissolved themselves or the issue somehow itself was eroded, but the reputation of the thieves in law was shattered. The militia also played a role, or they got at each other's throat as well, or they switched to a more invisible mode. Perhaps they disappeared from the city, and uh, frankly speaking, only after the independence, a law was enacted first in Georgia and recently in Armenia that the thieves in law do not belong in the society in this republic. So the guard becomes the main issue, the problem. Like the watchbirds became of the first generation because they also start to foment unrest uh, build their own reputation. So uh, to fight against this, they create another kind of bird, quote unquote, the Drujinas. The Drujinas were created uh, in the late 50s in the wake of the Universal Soviet Amnesty. There was a special resolution of the Supreme Council of the Soviet Union about setting them up. But these are not those Drujinas. These are the early 60s Drujinas more similar to the Spetsnaz. These were specifically called upon to fight the guards. The guards hated the Drujiniks. They described them as cowardly, as unable to uh, engage in a one-on-one -on -one fight, only attacking in groups. Like my informer said, so it was the same hatred that the thieves in law uh, entertained about the guards. The Drujinas seemed to resolve the issue of the guards. The guards got eliminated. But there, then something had to be done about these Drujinas because they were transforming into a new kind of a watchbird. Why? They started to pursue their own ends, already somewhat institutionalized because um, militia was protecting them. Their headquarters uh, became a place where they could even have summoned their foes. They took over some functions from militia, and this created another type of discontent. But it was very easy to combat them. You just had to disband them, since they were created by the Komsomol uh, militia background. And this is what uh, transpired. What's exciting here that although the guards are no longer there, but their system of the city structure, the imprint uh, on the city structure is still visible in a more innocent way, of course the so-called corner keepers. The corner keepers uh, are, this is no longer, this is uh, not exactly the same division along the district lines, but this is mostly on a smaller scale. Real, like city corners uh, within those districts and blocks these were not the guard people, but like secondary figures uh, from the old time guards stood on those corners and like scanned the passers by or could say something and snipe, especially making catcalls uh, on girls, often humorous, sometimes offensive. But this was in Cuba, there is even a term uh, or a competition for this, a pero piaro, who would come up with the best cat call or a snap. What was uh, remarkable is that there comes a moment in time, these were the cold and dark years of 1990s in the wake of independence, where 
the, the crisis were exacerbated in Armenia because it was accompanied by the First Karabakh War and the disastrous earthquake of 1988. It was a very grave crisis. And here is where the teenager groups emerged. This was somewhat similar to the Kazan phenomenon, more similar, and the city once again uh, was subjected to this uh, trend of becoming impenetrable. You could not like uh, transgress into another district. I have a case on the record incident when uh, an acquaintance of mine, they didn't let him pass a particular street, these teenagers, and he uh, asks his son, who through his contacts uh, with another group of teenagers engages in negotiations and after all this guy gets uh, rights of passage. This lasted very shortly uh, because the new era of the street tables arrived. This was the first free trade practice uh, uh, in the independence period and those teenagers were the very ones who manned those tables of petty traders so those who in the past they did not let pa uh, go through their streets were now embraced and welcomed because they were good for the trade of course they were backed by more adult authorities but the city, one may say, sort of opened up, and to this very day, there is this new, a new bird has not yet emerged, no new, no one to replace those guards. There are, of course, uh, invisible powers to be, which we only, which come to our radar only during the election campaigns. The same boys who were engaging in those fights and petty trade in the tables, although engaged in uh, rigging the votes. Now the city is seems to be safe for regular passers-by. It's permeable for pedestrians, but those traders have now their own agenda. They're the ones who to license someone to be or not to be within their districts, but this is something we de facto do not see or observe, and that belongs to a different uh, area. This is it. Thank you for your attention.